So yesterday, I made a video showcasing real-time AI post-processing effects. And I told you, at some point in the future, this stuff was going to be able to run at 30, 60 FPS in real-time. What a crazy prediction, because literally the day after I said that, someone came out with a real-time AI-generated Minecraft simulation that runs at 20 FPS as opposed to the CSGO simulation that ran at 10 FPS. And you can play this right now. This is a 100% AI generated version of Minecraft that you can play in your browser. If you want to check that out, link is down in the description. Now, I'm actually really happy that this came out because this is a perfect example of some of the things that I was talking about in my previous video. Now, some of you may not be aware, but I also have a game development studio. We have had millions of copies of our game downloaded on Steam, and I am also currently getting my graduate degree studying machine learning. So I would like to think that I at least know a little bit of what I'm talking about, but I'm sure everybody in the YouTube comments, as always, will disagree. But Either way, I am very excited to be able to show this off because this is a great example of 100% generative gameplay, as opposed to what I was showing in my video yesterday, which was using Unreal Engine to create scenes that you then apply a post-process effect using AI to. This is not that. And you will very quickly realize why it is not that. This is completely unstructured generation. And for people who don't know as much about AI, I think this is a really good example of the extreme when it comes to using AI generation for something when it has no guidance. And you can see some cool things that that can do, and you can also see some of the huge problems that that creates. So, I am currently playing this. This is my footage that I recorded previously of me loading this up and playing it. Now, it takes quite a while to load this up because, and many of you maybe don't know this, creating images like this using purely AI is actually very GPU intensive. So they are essentially running this on the equivalent of like GeForce Now, but GeForce Now on speed because it needs way more graphics processing power in order to generate this at 20 FPS. But one of the first things that you will notice, and this is actually one of the things that in my gameplay I am intentionally trying to elicit, you will notice that in this gameplay, Nothing stays the same. So here I am with nothing in my inventory, trying to place things down, trying to dig. And you'll notice just random things will occur. Depending on the angle that you were looking at an object, this, this is me trying to like dig straight down. Cause I was like, what if I just dig straight down? Look, I dig straight down, but then I'm on the surface again and you'll notice every single time you look away and look back the entire scene changes so so look i <laughs> look at that you you go up to a wall you look at a wall and the ai forgets everything that you were looking at so as soon as you turn around again it's all gone or it's all a new thing now from a gameplay standpoint this does not make for a very good game. But for me, as someone who is studying machine learning, this is extremely fascinating. And I will tell you a little bit of something. This is slightly a tangent, but it's a tangent that I think about a lot, especially as somebody who's studying this. And these are some of the reasons that I actually got into studying this field, because I started to notice these things. And I was like, oh my gosh, that is absolutely incredible. Let me ask you this. While you're watching this gameplay, all right, while you are watching this gameplay, this whole concept, like I said, it, it doesn't make a very good game, right? Sitting there, losing items, things randomly changing into other stuff. Like you're looking at a statue and suddenly it's not a statue anymore. It's a doorway. You know, it makes for the worst game in the world. But I will tell you this. What does that remind you of? What is this idea 
of like looking at something and then when you look away and look back it all just kind of like changes in this really weird amorphous impossible to predict way where it's it's all continuous but at the same time not continuous at all what does that remind you of it reminds you well it should remind you of human dreams this is literally your ability to play a AI dreaming. Like that's basically what this is. It is a completely unstructured AI fever dream world. And in some ways that's kind of a goat joke because it's like, haha, it looks like a dream. And then you're like, oh my god, it looks like a dream. <laughs> is is this an AI dreaming? Honestly, in some way probably i mean i'm not going to go down that rabbit hole but there is probably something in our brain that works very similar very similar to how these machines are also working when they're learning and i would say looking at this this is kind of another indication of this like when you go to sleep at night and and you remember what you were dreaming of playing this game is is what that feels like it really is now I will say from a more practical standpoint, before we go off into philosophy, academia, dreamland, where, you know, we just talk about this rabbit hole for forever. This demo, purely from a tech standpoint, is very impressive and very important. Now, AI video games in the future are probably not necessarily going to work like this or look like this. But what this does show is that it is possible to create images with AI fast enough that you can achieve a frame rate that is actually playable. Now, would you create a game that is 100% AI driven like this is where it turns into a complete fever dream? <laughs> I mean, I mean unless that's what you're going for, which I mean, I don't know. I feel like there could be something that would actually be interesting uh where you could have it have gameplay mechanics like this where it is actually like a dream state. Um, I would say no. I, I I don't think this necessarily makes a good game, but it does show that this tech is able to scale, that you are able to run it in real time. And comparing that to what I showed before, where you could use it maybe not to render out an entire game 100% generatively, but maybe you could use AI in real time to generate textures, to generate other kinds of content that isn't 100%, you know, like just mid-journey images at 20 frames per second, but implementing it in other ways that are more structured, that allow you to have that AI component where it's like, endless generation and endless possibilities but still structured enough so like you know it's not a fever dream state that is where i see this technology headed you look at something like no man's sky the whole idea of procedurally generated universes way back in the day i mean don't get me wrong the first versions of no man's sky had similar problems you look at the early stages of procedural generation where you know you can have a billion planets but they're all basically the exact same and a lot of people complained about that way back in the day but now you look at the current version of no man's sky and they've really tackled a lot of those issues and they still have this endless procedurally generated world but they've also found ways to create more interesting mechanics and make it so it does feel more alive and solving those problems i see the adoption and integration of AI into gaming following a similar path where in the beginning it's going to be like obvious what the problems are but there are solutions to these problems and I would also say AI is potentially one of the best solutions for that procedural generation problem where you have you know an entire ocean of content but it's all an inch deep whereas what is 
AI really good at. AI is really good at creating narratives and creating content out of thin air. So it could be that in the future there is a game that combines the procedural nature of something like No Man's Sky, but also has some kind of generative nature that implements AI, some kind of storyteller system or or otherwise. Um, Maybe it's not even graphical. Maybe it's just the AI is just generating NPCs that as once the NPC is generated, it's permanently in that world forever. Um, but as you continue to explore further and further, it actually built kind of like when you, when you go to the edge of the map in Minecraft, right? It just continuously builds. Imagine if you had a system where instead of that just being procedural, where it's just based off of very specific rules that the, developer had implemented imagine if there was an ai not just generating the world but creating completely new biomes that you had never seen before oh my gosh you know what that literally just occurred to me that's probably going to be the first thing that happens i mean you look at a game like minecraft a lot of those creatures and those characters and those those textures are very simple right like that's one of the beautiful things about minecraft it's like it's very immersive yet at the same time it's it's so incredibly simple um Imagine if you had an AI that could generate models, generate whole new biomes just out of thin air. And once they're generated, it's not going to be like this where it's, you know, generating every single image. Like once the the plant is generated, once the animal is generated, whatever, it's there for forever. But every single time you play through the game, it's going to be a completely new experience. I could totally see this going in that direction. So anyways, if you want to check this out for yourself click the link down in the description. It's probably going to take a while to play this because currently you can't download and run this. They have this on their own proprietary servers um, and you kind of have to GeForce Now connect to it and the wait time is like 10 minutes right now. But I do highly recommend doing it. You should definitely go check this out. Click the link down in the description and if you want to learn how to build this stuff. So like I said, I'm currently going to graduate school. I am currently learning this kind of technology. The video I showed yesterday um, or a couple of days ago where I combined Unreal Engine with AI, that technology is very similar, if not probably the exact same in many ways to this technology here. Now, in that video that I uploaded, there was a couple of comments that I thought were pretty interesting where they said, oh, you just ran this through like an online AI generative tool. And my response to that is like, where do you think those online generative tools are getting their code in order to to set these things up? Where do you think everybody's getting this stuff, right? You know, <laughs> they're not, they're not. Do you think that this company is running this all through like runway ML every single frame? Like, no, the tech for this, the, the source code for stuff like this is out there and people are now iterating on that. Um, so the systems, at least some of the systems that I have been showing, you actually have the ability to download and run stuff like this, build stuff like this on your own computer yourself. So if you wanna learn how to do that as well, there's a link down in the description to our online school that teaches how to like build AI generative models and, and deals with some of this stuff. If you are interested in learning about this stuff, Definitely go check that out, and we will we will take you down the rabbit hole, man. And I got to tell you, it is quite the rabbit hole. But besides that, definitely go check this out as well. Link's down in the description, and um, I'll see you guys in the next video. I hope you guys thought this was cool. I think this is cool, and I can't wait to see where this stuff goes. Dude, this whole next year, 2025 itself is going to be a fever dream at this point. Uh, so, yeah. All right. I'll see you guys in the next one. Cheers.